Okay, trying to get back on our motor here. Got the timing all done, so now we're going to start doing the rest of it. I'm going to put the heads on it, rocker boxes, push rods, oil lines, intake manifold. <clears throat> all of these parts need to go on the bike. So, I need to get some gaskets for doing this. So, there's the two head gaskets. We'll need those. Here's our two intake gas seals. Uh, this takes an O-ring style and not a rubber band. Rubber bands are these things right here. So don't mix them. I like these better, they seal better, but some people have problems. So whatever you do, do not put anything on your rubber stuff. Don't put stupid black tape on it. Don't put silicone. Don't put glue and oil or whatever the hell you got. Goes on dry. If it does, if it leaks, it's because you're doing something wrong. Or you got broken heads, broken intake. If the lip's broken off, it'll leak. You know, all that kind of stuff. So we have to do is you have to line the heads up so this lines up. That'll make it seal better. If you don't have it lined up, it don't work very well. Okay, right now it doesn't matter where we are on the, on the stroke, but we are basically at top dead center. Top dead center for front, so we can adjust the valves on this one when we get to that point. There we go, a little higher up. Spin this around this way. All right, so we need some head bolts. We're going to use some fancy ass Allen head bolts instead of good 12 point ones that Harley uses. So these are very hard to put in because there's no room to get by the rocker box. So we're going to do this with the rocker boxes off the motor. So it makes it a lot easier to, to assemble. And to torque the heads. Easy if you do this kind of crap, I just put them on the outside. Two over here we can see because then once you can't see them on the inside anyway. Very, very hard to put an Allen bolt when you have a rocker box overhanging the hole. <clears throat> you have to use a cut down Allen or something to grind the box out. You usually gotta do something stupid to make it work. If you just use a stock 12 point, it works great. Same thing goes for acorns if you want to use the acorn style head bolts. Which look better than Allen's. But not as good as 12 point. Okay, so that's that. Okay, as usual, you got a round part of a washer and you got a flat part. So, a round part goes against the bolt, flat part goes against the head. Unless you want it to look like crap, then you put the crappy side up. You are free to do whatever you want to do. Didn't need that one, did you? Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. They polish both sides. I think that's the top. Yep. Pretty equal. Okay, we use copper head gaskets here, so you can put them on dry or you can put paint on them. I put paint on my head gaskets. So this is a nice thick ass aluminum paint. Uh, over in Europe they use it for Mercedes exhaust manifolds right here. They have a spray on paint for doing that. That's the same thing. This has very, very heavy particulate matter in it, so dull aluminum usually has more in it than silver does. This paint is uh, 20 years old. I bought it out when they discontinued it. I think I'm on my third can, I bought like 16. Pretty much have a lifetime supply. On the race bike, we don't even use these, we just use this. So all you do is you take it and you spray it. On here, like any paint, 
don't need a real heavy layer. You need an even layer all the way around. And just hold it on the side, get the rest of it. Like that. Let it get tacky and put it on. In this case, you're going to let it get tacky on the motor. Boom. Now what happens is when you when this gets hot, well first when you torque it down it squishes most of it away. What is left is the particulate matter. And that's what seals up the little pores and stuff in the gaskets and the heads. When you heat up and run it, it boils all the uh, solvents that are left, that VOC stuff, and dissipates away and just leaves the aluminum behind. So on my race bike, I actually burn a hole through the piston. I have a ceramic coat on my piston domes with silver paint because I just paint the pit. I paint the whole top of my cylinder, squish it down in the head. So the paint will be on the valves, will be in the combustion chamber, be on the port, or be on the the piston dome. After you make the run, you got a hole through the piston, and you'll still have paint on the other side of the dome. So the paint doesn't go away very easily. At least my paint doesn't. So you'd be surprised how long that paint stays, and it definitely stays along the whole gasket surface. It never, I've never burned it off the gasket surface. It's always there. So on flathead motors and iron, they don't use any. They just use paint. You always have, and then on the, on the, uh, like I said, on my Sportster, I don't use anything either. I just put paint. But I did machine my surfaces really flat, which does help. Okay, so that's done there. So now we take a little bit of oil. And we oil up our bolts here. Put a generous amount on there. Especially with chrome. Chrome. chrome likes to gall up instead of tighten. Now if you have the fancy ARP special thread lubricant, use that. You can also use a nice heavy transmission oil, rear end oil. High poly gear oil works really good. Got a lot of high pressure additives in it. And it'll let you get a nice good true torque. Crappy ass 5-10 weight motor oil don't work very good. There's no oil there, so piss. It doesn't lubricate for it's a crap. That's why you can't turn in a Harley. It only works on new stupid cars that have a bunch of roller bearings everywhere. And they burn up too because the oil sucks. Alright, so where's my heads at? Head. Put four bolts in the head. This appears to be a front head. It goes in the front of the motor. Line up the bolt, drop it straight down. If you're lucky, the bolt's going. You don't seem to want to go in very easily. Rear head, you do the same thing with it. This is very easy to do when you have no rocker box on you. You cannot do it like this in the motor, in the chassis. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we got to torque these bolts down because they don't want to go in the holes. So I use my torquing device. Torque wrench. Hear the grinding? Oh, they suck. Okay, you rotate the head inward just like we do on the cylinder when we put the cylinder on it. Just go down until it touches. Do a cross pattern. Don't torque it, just go until it touches. Now 
Okay, that one's down. Now we do the same thing to the rear one here. Rotate inward. Oh, great. Oh, yeah, it's another one. Jeez. That's a little tight. I mentioned I don't like chrome. Can't imagine why. See if we're going to back hole. Is it the hole or is it the bolt? Appears to be both. Right. Nice stuff. Put a die on it, but easy die doesn't do anything in chrome. Chrome's really hard. Usually just kind of screws the die up a little bit. Oh, this one goes in better. And it gets tight. It's almost torqued. Oh, the wash is loose. False torques. This makes me hot. I'm already hot. I'm working too hard. Washer got tight. Whew. Okay, now we take the manifold. See how it fits. Needs to come out just a little bit. Whew. Definitely hot. <sighs> I didn't work too hard. All right, so you want to make sure this lines up pretty closely. Now, when you put the O-rings in the manifolds, they naturally want to come out a little bit. So, if you're going to fudge, fudge the heads out slightly for where they should be. So now we're going to have to move the heads out just a little bit. You're looking in here. You can see how the the head is further in the intake is, just a little bit. So right now we got the heads rotated all the way in. We're going to kick them back a little bit. And they shouldn't have a whole hell of a lot of torque on them. So we should be able to move them a little bit. But they might not be. We'll see. Look like they're a little tight. OK, 
Okay, so now we come back here and make sure things are loose. Didn't move that time. This one's out. Okay, try it again. See how it matches up this time. It's better. Still need some more though. This one's going to be going all the way out. Okay, that's all the way against the stop. Stop is a clearance in the bolts. To get to go more, you have to loosen up the cylinders and move it. Which we don't want to do because they're sealed. Okay, this one here. That looks pretty good right there. I think we're pretty good right there. Okay, so what we got now is our manifold goes on like that. See now the these edges right here where the lip is on the manifold is just about flush like they're supposed to be. And you look on the inside, see how it lines up on the port pretty nicely now. This head here might be slightly further in than it needs to be, but it's close. Like I said, the O-rings are gonna push things out just a little bit, so I'm already being a little bit out. Okay, so those are pretty good. Okay, now we've got to do we've got to deal with these stupid ass head bolts being tighter than hell. We're losing a lot of torque because they're not tightening up like they're supposed to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run them in and out a couple times with the uh, zip gun and get them where they work correctly. Uh, let's see. We'll try the little zip gun and see how that works. Might have to go to the big one. Okay, that's got it freed up a little bit. Put a little bit of oil on it. So the cast air and the chrome have to match each other to work correctly. So that's what we're doing here. You can hear the drag on that one. Now if you didn't have the oil on here, they might actually stick and go up. Yeah, Stern doesn't like the gall, so it's a plus. I'm wearing all the lubricant off that one. Yeah. 
fork on it. That one's dry. That one is not going all the way down yet. Yeah. Fits like a glove. I don't think any of these tricks are in the manual. There might be a reason for that. So these two here are the tightest two. I'm going to torque them. You know, someone's already been torqued you know, up and down a few times. Yeah, warming up my tools. All right, let's see what we got here. This torque, torque, torque. Oh, that one was loose. That's good. Okay. Right, they're tight. Could go one more time around though, just to make sure. Okay, normally it's pulled down to 65 foot pounds. And there's 65 right there. Probably pull a little extra because I think some of these bolts are tight. Okay, let's see what we got. Not there yet. Sixty-five, aren't we? Yep. There it goes. Sometimes this wrench doesn't pop.
definitely getting hot now. Yeah, they're tight. Good and tight. Alright. Whew. Good and hot now too. Getting hot. It's a hot day. A hot night. It's almost tomorrow. Okay, intake manifold. You got two clamps. I like the full wrap around aircraft style. They hold the best. And they seal the best because they have that nice band that goes all the way around and squeezes it pretty evenly. Gives a nice fit. Okay, one of these has to be loosened up. So, go like this, loosen it up. You want to put oil on this thing. And loosen this one up a little bit also. So put a little assembly oil on the threads here. So you do that so now you can get more torque for the same amount of torque on the wrench. Which means you can torque it tighter without stripping it. Okay, this one has to come off. Okay, pick what number you want, SNS or you want X158 up. Let's put SNS up. Okay, this one here we're going to slip into the head. This one here we're going to roll around the edge. Roll around means, it's like, like I said, roll around. Roll. So you just hold that until you're ready to let go. Okay, this one here is already on here. Make sure these are clear all the way around. These ones. Don't quite clear, but close. So you grab the clamp sticking to the inside, which is this way, or you can have them sticking to the outside. With an s, &S you can go either way. With a stock carbon, you have to go to the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and put these to the inside so they'll be behind the manifold or the uh, motor mount. They'll look a little cleaner. So make sure you put the O-ring in there. We're going to slip this one in there. Go ahead and push it in there all the way so it collapses the O-ring. Go ahead and roll this one over. Wiggle it just a little bit, it'll self-center. And you come over here and tighten it down just a little bit. So to hold it. If you torque it too much, it'll pull it off, so you want to come up to it'll hold itself up. It's already pulling this one out on this side, which is probably too much already. And now I gotta hook this one up. Yeah, I probably got it out too far now. Yeah. It's getting worse. It's coming out on its own. See how it's coming out this way. See the offset's way off in, in there. It's pulling off over here. As they tighten up the one, it squishes it off. So it'll, if you leave it alone, it'll fall off eventually. So right now I cannot Put the other one on because it's way too far out. Go ahead and loosen that up. Just going to go back in a little bit. It's still pretty far out. So then you slip this one around the mount of the head there. Over here. Hook it up. Just attempt to. If it'll let you. Just want to go 
does not want to go in. So the manifold pushes out too far, it won't let you engage it. Squeeze it back in pretty good. Try to hook it up before it's too late. Clamp to help get leverage. Usually that does not work. Nope. I'm sure the manifold's way the hell out there. tricks you can do to make it work, but try not to do those. The clamp is one of them, or the pliers, I mean. Come on, you bastard. There it goes. There we go. Might not go. Okay, just got one thread on there. Whew. That's a workout. You know, you just tighten them both up a little bit, pull it in. You also beat it in with a hammer as you go. So right now this thing is pooched way out. You stagger these and get a wrench on both sides. You can see how this thing's way the hell out. See how it's not even close to where it belongs in there? So you gotta get this thing beat into where it belongs. But you gotta do that by putting pressure on it. The clamps will initially will center it. Start pulling it in. Okay, when you get about halfway where it starts to go in, you go over here and tap on the hammer. Pooch it in there a little bit. Still needs to go in further. The heads need to be a little bit further apart, but we couldn't go anymore. Makes the pitman worse. Okay, we'll get a lot of tension on them right now. a little bit. This one's lined up pretty good. This one here is off. So the head needs to come my way a little bit. But it won't go no more. Is where it is right now. So as the O-rings settle in, the manifold will slowly go in deeper. Right now, the fat O-rings it won't go anymore. Okay, I'll take my straight edge and make sure the manifold straight up and down. Feel like that. Eyeball it. Looks pretty close. Like go just a tick higher on the top. Looks pretty close. You can run that slightly up or down for clearance issues on the gas tanks or whatever if you want to.
It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. That's got good torque. That's got good torque. Okay, so the manifold is on there. So it's not perfect, but it's in there. The gap closed up quite a bit on here. So it goes in there pretty good still. This side here fits a little tighter. See how tight it is on this side? So this one here lines up a little better than this one, but it's still adequate. It's not perfect, but they rarely are. But anyway, you can see how the ports line up pretty good. You'll be very impressed if an Evo or a twin cam ever lined up close because there's nothing to line them up. They just sit on rubber and they float all over the place. These are just big lips. So this one has a lip on it here, which I don't like on the back side, but it's compared to an Evo, it's perfect. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so that's how you do that. So let me go get some gaskets for the rocker boxes and we'll get them on. So we'll be back.